Hi and welcome once again to another helping of the digest. Uh, remember to hit the subscribe and the follow buttons to make sure that you don't miss any of our future clips. Now, today we've got one of my favorite people on board. We go back a long, long way. And it was this fellow who introduced me to artists such as uh, Ed Chapman, Tim Garner, Phil Horrocks, uh, Stephen Farley, Anna, Anna Gillespie, and tons of others besides. So uh, welcome Nick Bentley, founder of Art Zoo, which is simply the best art gallery in the Northwest of the UK. Hi, Nick. Hi, Andy. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's, it's an, it's an honour. It's, it's, it's a pleasure having you on board today. It's great great to uh, to see you again. Um, <clears throat> right, so if I can just jump straight in there, how how did you get involved in the uh, in the art scene in the, in the first place? So I, I, I have a fairly unorthodox route. Um, I spent a significant part of my early years, my, my, my 20s, uh, working abroad. And although um, the pay was very good, it was the, the nature of the, the work I was doing was pretty soulless. And um, after about seven years of living the high life in the place, place like Ibiza and Canary Islands and uh, European sunny destinations, I, I just thought I need to do something more significant, something that's a bit more rewarding as a job rather than just being financially uh, profitable. And, and, and so... I knew I was going to have to set up my own business, but I didn't know what that business was. And just totally by chance, I was traveling on the rebound from split up with a, a Danish girlfriend, actually. And um, I ended up wandering into a gallery in, in Phuket, in Thailand, of all places. And it was owned by a Thai woman, uh, but it was managed by a Scottish guy uh, called Paul. And uh, it was just the smell, the kind of, stimulation the colors just there was just something about that environment i just thought you know what this is what i want to do and it has no rhyme or reason or logic i was i was i was looking <laughs> for ideas and i didn't know what they were and of course i just thought right this is what i'm going to do um so i did one last season uh, working in the beat i worked extremely hard and saved as much money as i could and then uh, i toddled off back to a little old blighty little old uk and uh, announced to my friends and family that I was going to set up a business selling artwork. And, of course, the first uh, reaction was, but you know nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd studied business study, so I, ha I was confident that I had the, the skill set to be able to deliver the business. The art side was just, you know, going to be a, a, a journey of discovery, and, 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 that, and it's turned out to be. And here I am 23 years later uh, still going strong so I, I made the right decision i don't know why i made that decision but um it was it was the best decision i made around yeah it's uh, it's quite an incredible journey that now um i, I mentioned art, art zoo's a gallery but it, it's it's much more than that isn't it so um because because you, you've sort of moved into art zoo projects as well so what else is yeah. there apart from the gallery yeah so i, I think the reason why the longevity of art series is such is because we've we've not been solely reliant on just the one gallery business model. So in to complement running concurrently from the very, very beginning, actually, from when I started the business um, and, I, and I had my first gallery, um, I always looked towards the corporate market, towards the art consultancy. Mm. So that I, I suppose you, you, you described that as a kind of professional service. You know, you, you pay for architects and you pay for interior design as well. You pay for someone that's a specialist in art that can give you good advice, mm. whether it be to uh, invest in artwork or commission artwork or advice on, on available pieces to, to buy. And, uh, and so the two art consultants and gallery model have always run concurrently and they've always complemented each other. And so at times, potentially, when the gallery's maybe a little bit kind of slow, maybe we've got a really nice... Uh, international project you know and a big piece of sculpture in well in, in Dubai mm. um, and uh, and so it's it, 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 it's worked itself out very nicely over the years and also freed me up to do more exciting things more you know varied projects um, and 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 that's that's really how how it's how it's worked out. Mm. You mentioned Dubai there. Now, obviously, I, I, I live here in Dubai. Um, Do you? And, <laughs> <laughs> and there's, there's a, uh, they're, they're very, very big in, into the art here um, and, and bringing it to, to, to the masses. And you were one of the first people to get involved in, in the big 
art scene here, weren't you? You know, with with, with the big sculptures. Uh, the uh, the first one was the Concha, wasn't it? Um, outside. It, 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 so, it was. Can, can you you know can you elaborate on that a, a little bit more? How did that work? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So so the. So, so the the story is I, I opened my first gallery in uh, when was it ninety nine? It was actually in in a big shopping centre called the Trafford Centre, which is you know a mecca for shopping. And and the reason why I ended up there is because um, I, a client, the, the owner of the whole shopping centre, who turned out to be I think he's the richest person in the northwest of England. Mm. Um, he turned out to be my client within a year of me starting my business, which is utterly bizarre. <laughs> and I ended up building a, a personal relationship with this, this kind of titan of industry. And um, he asked me to do a series of portraits initially of his mother and father. So talk about plucking the heartstrings. Yeah. And we delivered this amazing, almost like full life-size portrait of his mother and father, who he adored. And he was so impressed that he commissioned a second portrait of his mother. And what was what was really charming is that he had this, I mean, it's a bit of a cliche, but within his wallet, he had a black and white photograph that was folded on the corner of his mother in this gorgeous 1920s uh, ball gown. And he said, can you can you create can you find the right artist that will be able to produce this full size in color of my mother? Because it was black and white. Mm. And then and, and we did. And we found uh, a, a, an artist from, uh, from Chorley of all places, an elderly lady. She was probably at the time, maybe 65. Mm. And she created this most astonishing portrait of this very wealthy person's mother. And he, he he's not an emotional guy, but he, you could see he was almost tears were almost falling yeah. in his eyes. It was that good, you know. And he didn't think it was possible to translate this small photograph into this um, original piece of oil on canvas artwork. And um, and so we formed this like, really, really strange cultural relationship quite quite quickly. And um, and at the time, this, this shopping centre was a huge success. You know, it, it was it was so well attended. Shopping centres have obviously dropped a little bit mm. now, certainly in the UK, you know, maybe in Dubai. And, um, and, and he said, look, I've got this vacant space. Um, do you want to open an art gallery that I won't charge you any rent? So I'm like, wow, yeah, okay. <laughs> but within a year and a half of my setting up my business, I had a big posh art gallery. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was, it was, it was quite a remarkable thing, really. So, so th this, this was, um, this was running along quite nicely. And then um, a friend who turned out to be Charles, who who you know, who, who works with us, who's a colleague now, he'd been travelling the world and he stumbled across. Um, um, art zoo in the Trafford Centre and just thought what the hell is this this is the most kind of remarkable place in a shopping centre I've ever seen and so we built it up relationship and he was the one that said you need to start focusing on the Middle East particularly Dubai it's growing quickly you know you need to you need to get your ass out there really so um, so uh, that's exactly what I did I jumped on a plane and flew out there and organised meetings with various architects and interior designers and, and the doors just naturally opened because that was probably one of the first they're one of the, you know the pioneers to to offer a service that essentially they were looking for and that that kind of transpired to a few smaller projects and then we we were asked by Ema Emma yeah. um they were building this status five star hotel called the address in downtown dubai and um and they were looking for like a centerpiece something that the first thing you see as you approach the building and basically the last thing is as you leave and so we we went through a various process with the uh, atkins you know the big yeah you big the, the big architects architectural yeah. practice so it's with atkins and um and ema and lo and behold after a couple of years we ended up delivering this incredible piece of sculpture which was probably the first major contemporary piece of sculpture mm. that was commissioned in the region yeah it was it was five meters high it was made from cast aluminium it was obviously abstract in, in, in its concept because of, 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 of the, uh, the aesthetic and, and, and the religious con considerations. And, um, and that was just like a real eye opener, a, a real journey on the process of delivering some really quite kind of serious, expensive artwork. So it, it moved very quickly. The, uh, yeah. the, and the experience was, was extremely rewarding and, and invaluable, really, because not yeah. many. I consult sometimes get the opportunity to work on that level.
Yeah, that's incredible because, um, you know, that stands alongside um, artists like B Botero, you know, world famous, massive, massive, um, massive artist. And so, yeah, although his piece isn't there anymore, it was, you know, it, it, I think it was uh, 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 your, your piece was there before his. Um, yeah, so, that's yeah, right. That's you, the, you, you really, really made inroads. Nick, I've known you for, um, for well, 20 or so years now, haven't I? So what's, what's the biggest change uh, in the art scene that you've seen in the last 20 years? Um, it, is, it is probably over the last two, three years. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, I mean, I mean, back in the good old days, artists produced the work, they graduated from university, they had a body of work. People like myself, galleries came along to the degree shows. They saw the potential, they saw the quality of the work there and they sought representation. And then a relationship built very naturally over quite a long period of time. And it was almost like a commitment, it was almost like a marriage where the gallery grew and the artist grew and we gave them exhibitions and the whole the whole thing developed probably fairly slowly but in in a in a in a mature way and and the, the role of the gallery was to help them along give them advice give them a bit of kind of aesthetic input and 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 to, to nurture them and and to and to develop their career in, in quite a kind of solid way now what's happened is that with the events of social media and um, particularly Instagram, as far as artists are concerned, but of course is, is, is Twitter and all, all the other outlets. What, what artists have found themselves to be able to do is to get a profile and to get some followers and, and, and to, get, to get themselves out there fairly quickly, you yeah. know? And it's been quite revolutionary, and I can see the, 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 the benefits that artists have, 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 um, have, have, have taken from this. And... It's, it's, it's thrown a lot of galleries because what's happened is that instead of a, an artist relying on a gallery to sell a work and in effect the gallery maintaining commission and sales so they can continue the, the business, what started to happen is the artist is, is to broke away a little bit from that relationship and they've started to generate an income independently of the gallery. Mm. And so what that means, instead of 100% of the sales we go into the, the gallery, maybe say 50% of and what's happening, most galleries as an economic model, it's just simply it doesn't rub any longer. It, the numbers don't stack up. So what's been happening is a lot of artists now with this independence, they, they feel it's, it's a golden age. They, they feel it's a real kind of wonderful change in, in, in the relationship. Mm. Um, and, and to a certain extent, that's true. You know, I, I, would, I, would, I would concede that. But what, what's been happening, so... Slowly but surely, all these galleries are failing. They're all closing. The bricks and mortar, the, the experience, the way mm. art should be experienced, which is walking into a door, seeing the textures, seeing the colours, seeing get, getting a real feel mm. for the work. That's being replaced by the way we, we, we're experiencing it at the moment. We're, not, yeah. we're, we're online. We're having, having a kind of slightly more distanced, flat kind of experience, you know, yeah. rather, rather than a human. And, and, and so... So, so artists have, have, have maintained or increased their income level and their profile, and some have done extraordinarily well. In the same time, all the galleries are fake. And where, where, what, what, what how, how is it going to work itself out? Now, I, I think, even though the artists are on a roll at the moment and they're, 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 they're independent, I think they'll, a lot of them will just plateau because they don't have the ability to raise their game and to, mm. to, to, to be given the right profile and for people to invest in them, yeah. for them to progress their career. And what's going to happen is they're going to flatline and they're, they're not really ever going to mature and develop and move on to something. Yeah, the odd one will with a really good one. Mm. A lot will just stagnate. And so you've got, this, you've got this really odd situation where the galleries can't maintain their businesses in the normal way. And then they're not taking this. They're not taking the, the income that they would normally. So I myself um, have been to a certain extent a victim of this, and I closed my gallery about my bricks and mortar gallery about three years ago. Mm -hmm. Now it turned out to be, you know, quite lucky really because of when COVID came along, they're, they're a big investment, they're a big commitment financially. So um, by chance, I 
I, I had to close my gallery because developers were, were going to knock the building down, actually, and, and I had to find an alternative space. And I just would have naturally moved on to, to find another space. But but I, I decided that things are changing and I want to, after 20 years of having a gallery, I, I, want, to, I want to mix it up a little bit. I want to change my lifestyle slightly. Mm. And I fancied working in a different way. So I closed the, the gallery. And over the last two, three years, I've been really trying to work out the best business strategy, the best way forward mm. in, in these new times, in these new digital times, you know. And by coincidence, COVID came along and, it's turned out to be the, the, the best move I've, I've made because um, that financial liability that would have been there, uh, uh, luckily, I, I've, I've not had to maintain. So in that respect, it's been quite, quite, quite lucky, really yeah. lucky scale. You mentioned there as well the, um, the, the, the whole sort of experience of the gallery. I mean, for, for my, from my perspective, you can't beat that. Um, you, you see yeah. photos of things, people, you know, um, do, Pfizer and I opened a gallery in Saudi Arabia and we had so many photos come through that look great. But when you see, see the work itself, it really wasn't that good. And so yeah, yeah. I, I think this kind of happened, though, didn't it? With DVDs and videos, it was going to be the death of cinema. And OK, cinema took a hit for a while, but it, there was a, a big rebirth again you know and it's it was about the whole experience of going out and sitting there with a bunch of people you know and being involved in the well the, yeah the cinematic experience because nothing nothing beats the cinema for films nothing does and i think Absolutely. i think it, the same will happen with galleries I, I i think as well once once we've got a lid on covid people will naturally want to come out again and so you know no, the whole Absolutely. experience of being in the gallery and he touch it, you know. I, I mentioned Stephen Farley's work. You know, it's very tactile. You know, oh, you want to you want to touch yeah. that kind of thing, and you know, yeah. and, and see yeah. and see from different angles, see the way light reflects on things. <coughs> yeah. I also mentioned um, Ed, Ed Chapman there. You know, and we met through through uh, one of Ed's pieces. I, I walked past your gallery and saw this this painting moving, and I thought, how the hell does that happen? And it was a rainy day, and it was it was Johnny Rotten. I'll just stick that up here. <laughs> it, it was my Johnny Rotten, um, and yeah, I, when I got close, I thought, "Oh my God, that's that's a mosaic, and that's how it was working." It was almost like it was alive, and that that was the you know the, the birth of our relationship. And so, the gallery, yeah. I, th I think, is so important, um, and I, I think it'll, I definitely think it will make a comeback. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've literally been spent the last couple of years, one, because of COVID, you, you tend to hunker down. And mm. I've, had, I've had this space, I've had this natural, um, this, this, this ability to be able to step back from everything a little bit and, and get my head around the whole thing and work out what the best model is mm. moving forward as, as, as a gallery. So the, 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 the conclusion I've reached is that if, if a gallery is going to invest in you know expensive website if we're going to you know write really interesting articles about the artists we're going to give them exhibitions we're going to take them to art fairs you know we're going to invest our time and effort it's, it's a long-term proposition and artists need to value that and it's not one or two years it, it, it's five to ten realistically and and if they if they see the value of a gallery and, and how much we can both progress rather than this plateauing by themselves you know the, this kind of status that they're going to they're going to have with, through social media then the, the the realignment of the relationship is that we want the artists that we're going to represent moving forward they're going to into our expertise and the experience of 23 years of running the gallery and they're going to have to commit themselves a little bit more mm -hmm. and uh, recently they've been kind of sat on the fence because they won't commit fully with a gallery because they might not earn enough money and but they're really a decent amount themselves so, so they're, in, they're in this kind of limbo and and really the time now is is, is to start having serious conversations with artists it's almost moving into the, the agency role rather than the gallery mm. role mm. you know and we're going to look after your artwork and we're going to give you opportunities to 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 move into areas that you would never even think of um so say for example um artist uh, chris Aitchison that we represent mm. that he does these gorgeous photo realistic paintings um normally of, of around manchester is, is tended to but he's always leaned towards america and he's just done these two incredible paintings and 
on on face value, it would look like a kind of utopian vision of of, of America. You, you've got the highway and the Mustang and the the mountains in the background. But if you just kind of look in the detail, that there's there's something odd. There's 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 a under there's a disturbing undercurrent within the work, you know. Um, and and then another piece that we, which is which is really kind of sad. It's basically a McDonald's. Um, outlet you know in in this glorious kind of verdant green kind of area and mm. and 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 this there's a there's a decay about it there's there's a real kind of odd odd mood about it and, and, it, and it's questioning consumerism is 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 questioning the way we live at the mm. moment and 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 what we're going to do we're going to take those paintings and we're going to target them on the more serious collectors and the, the quality shines through i mean you obviously have to see them i'll i'll, I'll send yeah. you some images yeah not yet yeah because we, we can't release them yet and um and we're going to open some doors um maybe initially through all the expats in la probably or something mm. like that and we're going to work towards an exhibition and it's going to do a whole series this uh, americana series you know and if an artist was independent he wouldn't have the vision, he wouldn't have the energy, mm. he wouldn't have the resources to even think in those terms. Yeah, yeah. You know? So what we say, if we're prepared to do that, then we want some commitment from you. And we're at to, back to the, the, the kind of what was the original relationship with an artist where there's commitment on both sides. So yeah. we're going to realign, kind of restructure our relationship with an artist, but on on, on a higher level, basically. Mm. Um, the The... The quality of the artwork is going to be even more so. The sale point is going to be more so, and we're going to be targeting collectors. Mm. And so the ante is all all going to be going to be ups, you know. Um, so so that that's the kind of model that Art Series is starting to adopt. We're moving into the the, the agency role, mm. um, but we're going to handpick. We're going to have pop ups, or we're going to make have collaborations, say with an LA gallery or, or a New York gallery. And and it, it's working together in, in in collaboration. I think that's probably the the, the better model, mm. you know. Um, and then more locally in Manchester, I, I think we'll probably maintain that. We'll have an exhibition program, but we won't necessarily have bricks and mortar that we're committed to pay three hundred sixty five days a year. Mm. So we'll we'll do a night. We'll have make a night. We'll find a nice location. It could even be like a a corporate reception area and a gorgeous building in Manchester and we'll create this exhibition that will look amazing when for, for people visit. So he's thinking out of the box a little bit, still being able to see the work, but not necessarily in the in the conventional gallery yeah. form, you know, or, yeah. or mixing the two. Um yeah. so that that's that's prob that's one of the uh, the ideas, one of one of the ways forward I think we've got to come to do it. And I think I think the quality of the work will 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 come through. Um, by by working in that model, mm. Nick, you, you mentioned uh, early on about uh, you know um, gui guiding the artist. So, how much influence uh, say w w would you have on an artist? Let me give you an example here. Um, Dave Gunnin, a uh, very well known gallery in, in the sort of further over in Yorkshire way, he discovered uh, Olivia Pilling, um, and you can see the change in her style from a very. Uh, I know you're not a massive fan. Um, I, you can I, I, see I, the change. We, 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 we talked about Olivia a, yeah, a yeah, while yeah. ago. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll, All we'll I would say, I, I was, I was underwhelmed. That's fair <laughs> enough, you know. But listen, so, yeah, some yeah. are, some are, and, and, and some are, you know. But her, her style went through uh, quite, quite a big change. And since she's moved on and, and got, with all due respect to Dave, a, a broader representation, um, she, she's gone from sort of almost like the, the, the Fauvist style in, into a, a more, I don't know, um, uh, a more mainstream style, if you like. And uh, with one of your guys as well, I mentioned Tim Garner before. So Tim's work, is, it's gone through a variety of, uh, of changes, although essentially his, his style stays the same as it always has. I mean, it's remarkable work. It, it, it has really, yeah. I, I, yeah. I think it's fantastic. I, I think he's, he's one of the, the most underrated artists in the UK, for sure. Um, <clears throat> so how much inf influence in that do you have, you know, sort of guiding an artist into a certain direction? I mean, it, it obviously varies from, from artist to artist. Some will want more advice and support. Others, quite frankly, aren't interested. So you, 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 your relationship will develop naturally, 
And I suppose that the, the biggest the, the biggest influence that the, the gallery will have, the, the, the agency will have, is, is that we 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 have the uh, we, we have the respect of the artist where we can we can start to make. I suppose it's a value judgment. It's an aesthetic judgment on the better work, the not so better work, and the work that, that's quite frankly not cutting it. Now, sometimes um, artists don't have that objectivity or subjectivity um, because the stuff that they work, they think is all of it's great. And what we can do is we can kind of work through together and and say that's really working. And, and particularly for this collection that we want to be targeting, that's great. Mm. That's sort of working on it in a different respect. And quite frankly, I'm not really sure about that, you know. And, and it, it's been a bit brutal sometimes, but a lot of artists need that. Because they can't, they can't see it. They need, they need some input on what's working and what's in. So you don't, you don't dictate. You just suggest. It's, it's a kind of touchy feely process because you have to be respectful of what the artist wants to do and which direction they want to go. You don't want to hold them back. You just want to sort of steer them a little bit mm. and get them to, and get them to kind of understand so maybe the commercial aspect to the, the, the sellability of the work because ultimately. However, however, kind of beautiful the industry is, and 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 the benefits that it gives when when people produce work, you know, we have to sell it. Hmm. So we we have we have the commercial savvy to be able to bring the best of of, of the work out to make it the most sellable, you know. And and then of course if we if we do that, and then that responds in more sales, then that validates our decision, and then the artist has more res respect or has more you know, trust, because that's really what it's about. And then uh, the relationship maintains um, and it grows, you know, and, and we get to know each other that much more. Um, and there's that trust level that builds, you know. Um, and that, that's probably the, the, the biggest way, Yeah. Um, the, the best example I can give you. Right. I guess it's kind of like quality control, isn't it? Um, if, if you take, say, for example, I'm going yeah. sort of, to switch um, mediums here, uh, if we go to music, if, if you look at prints, there's some wonderful, wonderful stuff. But it's really diluted with, with quite honestly, a, a lot of crap. Um, yeah, yeah, whereas if it yeah. allowed the record company to, to keep control, as he fought yeah. against for so long, his quality may have been maintained. So Yeah, it's, it, it, it's a fine balance. And, you know, I would imagine it's a very, very difficult artist to, uh, you know, to control. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, he, he, he would be a challenge, shall we say. Um, but but most 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 artists, you know, they're professional and they're receptive to ideas. Mm. You know, they, they, they're not they're not so egotistical where they will just just blank and, and dismiss everything that you say. You know, there there, there is there is there is an understanding there. They, they, they're not stupid. You know, yeah. um, and they they put their faith in you mm. by uh, you know having representation. Um, so so that that's that that's it, it's set up nicely from the beginning. Mm, yeah i guess it's it's kind of it's it's all the, you know art is pretty subjective anyway isn't it i remember there was a, a, a one woman uh, sent sent me a piece and i said look i don't think it's for our gallery and she got really stroppy uh, and said it's going to sell for hundreds of thousands <laughs> it still hasn't and i wish it all the best to you but yeah it, it is yeah. subjective it, it is but what's really interesting i mean I, i've said this for, for a good few years now and for some reason i, I go back to the ancoves gallery i think mm. it's because it was so big it had so much space I, in my mind's eye I, I i say to i say to people if i took 10 paintings let's say i mean or, or sculpture or you know, photography whatever you want let's call it 10 paintings and i lined them up yeah in the gallery and then we just let anyone joe public just wander in yeah and just say, tell us your best one, tell us your second best, tell us your worst one, you know, pick out three paintings. After a while, even though it will sort of vary slightly, the same ones will invariably start to kind of surface. Mm. And I find that absolutely remarkable. Of course, you'll get anomalies. Of course, you get perverse people like you. You'll go, that's the best one. And I'm just thinking, no, it's not. It's the worst, and it not. Um, and and, and, and this, 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 this is an innate weird appreciation of the better work in a weird way and and i find i find it, it gives me faith in in humanity and mm. and and we we do seem to have like a common 
understanding of, of what kind of works and what doesn't, you know. Um, and that's that that's that's obviously uh, anecdotal. It's the, 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 there's no hard facts behind that. But well, over the years, people just seem to pick out the best ones. Yeah. And uh, and and it's it's amazing, you know, that that people that don't necessarily have that certainly don't have the experience I have or, or, or yourself for that matter, you know, that that absorb themselves in visual art, you know, all the time, all day in, day out. They 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 still they still kind of on, on board a little bit. They seem to be able to kind of pick them pick the best ones out as well. Mm. All right. Um, let's talk about your personal choice or, or, or you know, your, your personal taste. Um, who's, yeah, yeah. who's the artist that you've represented that's uh, that surprised you most? Is that a fair oh, question? God. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I, I absolutely surprised <laughs> me. No. Well, Tim Garner, because he's still alive. <laughs> because he's... Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's this this chain smoking, <laughs> and then and then this 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 Tim Garner, Tim. you know that 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 man goes through a pack of roll up tobacco, you know the the fifty gram yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. He can get his hands on them like a day, <laughs> <laughs> and 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 the poor the poor man doesn't have any teeth left any longer, you know, and then um, and and so he's been he's been like this for for twenty years since I've known him. So I'm, and he's still going strong, yeah. you know. He's, he's he's got that kind of is is the absolute kind of you know full fully formed genuine artist where yeah. he just he's driven he gets up in the morning and he works all through the day and he'll do that seven days a week and and nothing will really kind of like knock him knock him off it, off his routine you know yeah. so 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 Tim Garner for 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 pure kind of longevity <laughs> <laughs> and 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 his 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 work has has been you know, consistently goes yeah. and continues to improve. He's actually working on a, 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 a three commissions at the moment, which has been really nice. It's the first major commission that we've managed to attain, um, you know, post COVID or you know, post sort of an, an end of COVID. Yeah. And it's in um, there's some lawyers in you know Spinning Fields, yeah, which is the, the business district yeah. in Manchester for, for everyone that doesn't know. And um, and this these lawyers have taken the top floor, the the penthouse. And said, I saw that they were moving. You know, would you be interested in working with an art consultant? And and they said yes. So I had a meeting. Um, the first piece that we've we've um, we've actually hung now. It's by a Dutch artist called Elisa Limapo, mm -hmm. and it's called. Um, it, so it's for lawyers, and it's called Deliberation, which I thought was mm -hmm. was was a great a great kind of title. And, and in fact, you've got profiles of heads at different angles, and they're almost having a conversation. Yeah. But it's a major piece. It's two point four meters high by 2.2 meters wide it came in two sections we had to bolt it together it came from holland and it's a nice corporate space but they all look very similar and they're all very neutral and they're all kind of like a bit insipid really mm. and uh, i said look this is this with this it was about maybe like five centimeters on the top and bottom to fill you know for where the height of the ceiling is it just about fitted and I said, look, it feels like a gamble, but it'll fit and it will work, you know. And so they had faith, faith in me. And, and we hung this piece and it just utterly transformed mm. the whole office. And while we were fitting it, you could see all, all the uh, all the employees, you know, walking past going, oh, what's that? You know, that yeah. that's what that's amazing, you know. And and they all just took it responded to it. they all just mm. really really loved it you know and that and that was that was the power of, of our work within an environment just to, just to change it completely it, it, it still astounds me the effect it can have anyway back to tim so there's a wall opposite so we've moved on to this secondary collection so they've commissioned these three um cityscapes um so tim's um, done his preliminary work and he's 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 gone to the office and he's taken photographs. I mean, I mean, on a gorgeous day, it's, it's 17 floors. So you've got the height you see right over Manchester. You know, there's been a series that he's done from a, an elevate, elevated perspective th th over the last couple of years. You might have seen that. Mm -hmm. And um, and so there's going to be three related complementary um, viewpoints, landscapes, cityscapes from from their office. Um, so he's just working on on them at the moment. So. Um, you know he's really happy. He's made some money. You know, he'll probably go over to to Paris when he when he makes a, a, a nice mm. lump of money. So he's he, he's happy again. He's 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 off and going. Um, anyone else? 
I don't know. Um, they, they, they've all they, all the artists have got the, the, their own stories to tell. Mm. You know, they, yeah. they they're absolutely fascinating. They they have a fascinating life, and that's one of the reward for me. It's not it's not the kind of the egotism of having a posh art gallery and people coming in and playing that role, and it's you know it's it's all very flattering. It's all very nice. But I I think probably the more rewarding aspect of my job is actually an insight into another world that I would never have, yeah. have imagined and would never have, 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 have understood. And, and that's, that's, that's as, as, as fascinating or probably more, you know, yeah. over the years, we, we built up this, this, this relationship, you know, Phil, Phil Horrocks is a, is a great example. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, 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 it opens a lot of uh, strange doors and introduces yeah. you to, to, to some, some incredible people, yeah, with with, with some yeah. good stories. Um, <clears throat> Nick, how do you um, how do you convince someone? Um, okay, I mean, for, for me, the, the the most important thing about buying art is that you like it. But if you, if you've got someone who wants to get into investing, what what tips would you give to the to the the new investor? I would say, first and foremost, that the artist has to have a good profile. They have to have a credible profile, and they, I think realistically, for the majority of the the investment, they, 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 they'll have to be, they'll have to attain a certain kind of level of notoriety, right? Because without that, um, it is it is a punt, you know. Um, and some some people do that. They'll they'll look at graduates from Goldsmiths or w- w- whichever you know university, and, and they'll just they'll just they'll make a punt and maybe buy. You know, ten pieces from different artists, and maybe one will su- succeed. Right. So, 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 first and foremost, it's a, it's a, it's a proven track like record over a sort of reasonable period of time. You know, and then, and then, secondly, quite frankly, it, it's the gallery that represents them. Mm. You know, if they're like I say, big profile, forty thousand followers on Instagram, and just putting out there. Every single piece that they're, 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 they're producing, everyone's seen straight away, you know, they're, they're kind of diluting the, the impact of their work. Mm. Then they'll be hot property and everybody seems to be talking about them and it will feel like they're a good investment. But I don't think with, with the guidance of the gallery behind them, like that, that foundation, I think it will be it will be subject to a fashion, a, you know, a, a kind of there'll be, there'll be a peak and then I, I think they'll drop. So... Mm. If, he, if, if, the, if the artist isn't represented by a decent gallery, the, 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 that's, a, that's a red flag to me, you know, because they're not being given the right support and advice and what we've just discussed before. They, they, they're, not, they're not given the opportunities. Um, so so, the, so that, that, that's, that's the second thing. The third is, to be honest, um, the entry point for investing artwork is, is, is probably, you know, more in the kind of five to 10,000 mm. rather than the sort of one to two to three. Yeah. Now, of course, yeah, it's great when you, uh, when you book the trend and you do, you do have foresight and, and pieces of artwork were increasing value. But I think it's more likely to happen once the, the entry level of, of the price point is, is that little bit kind of higher really. Mm. Mm. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I guess. Um, I mean, I, I, I've always bought because you know, first and foremost, I have to like the piece. If it's going to hang in my house, then yeah, I, I've got. I'm, I'm, got to like I, I'm it. the same. I, I'm I'm the same completely. You know, um, I mean, you've got you've got the likes of kind of, you know, Banksy, and 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 it's just it's just it's just always going to have that profile and always going to have that support and always <clears> going to be so popular. Because he does things so well and is is super cool and you know you know the the the, the piece that was shredded mm. did you did you hear about that yeah one? yeah of course yeah I mean that that was like you know genius it, wasn't it, it? it, it totally absolutely absolutely and, and, and like, oh, yeah. only banks can keep coming up with this stuff you know but, and, uh, and 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 so he will always be solid probably investable. But then you know you look at the entry entry level for his work. You know it is it is that five ten fifteen, and that's a, a relatively minor piece. You know yeah. you're into fifty thousand hundred k. You know before you even really blinked an eye. So um so so the, the, the there are there are definites almost. You know? you? Um, and and then and sorry, go on. No no no, you, go on, you, go on, finish off. 
so uh, the, the the other thing as well of course is is um if there's a a finite source i.e the artist is dead yeah yeah <laughs> you know that, that 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 that's an obvious one of course so if they've reached a certain level and there is this kind of resale value oh that, that's probably another thing as well if there is a significant auction resale value f- with, with with the artist's work if it's yeah. proven not just from the sale from the gallery but the secondary market is is active and you're starting to see consistent prices coming through again that's a really really good sign yeah um, the, is, and then when they're dead, of, of course, there is only a limited amount of pieces that can can come onto the market, yeah. and that and that will naturally just put, push the price up anyway. Yeah, of course. Um, it, go, going back to Banksy, um, that guy is. Uh, I, I think part of his genius as well is is in his marketing. Um, yeah. And I, I don't. You're obviously aware of brainwash. Um, who I'm still not convinced about. Absolutely not. I'm, I'm still convinced that's just an element of Banksy who's, who's promoting to, to see how far he can promote, to be honest with you. So um, when, when does, and if, if you look at artists like Tracy Emin, right, I'm not a massive, I can't say that I'm, I'm a fan of Tracy Emin <laughs> at all. I think, I, think, I think we've probably had this conversation before. <laughs> <laughs> sure, we will have again. No, no, neither yeah. am I in, in the main. But yeah. we, we we're back to the bloody bed, aren't we? Yeah, go go on. Well, go on. it's it's not only the bed either. You know, the, the only the only thing that, that I ever saw of Trace Simmons that I really liked was a, a video where she was talking to a dog, and the dog said, "How about you know a bit of rumpy pumpy?" And she says, "Come on to it. Come on, you're a dog." And she said, "Oh, Tracy, surely you should know better than that." Which I thought was was actually brilliant. I thought it was very very good. But the rest of her stuff, I mean, she she, she was the the professor of drawing at at, at uh, I can't remember which university now. She can't draw. <laughs> you know, sure, she, she, it's, sure. it's, 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 you know, again, I don't know. Sometimes it seems if you get picked up by by uh, a Saatchi, um, then by, all of a sudden, you know, that's it. Doesn't matter what you do, it's it's going to sell. And so, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, know, yeah. How much how much of it is marketing? How much of it is is actual talent? I mean, I mean, it, it's kind of unfair that you trace the Emmy because the circumstances that led to her notoriety and popularity. You know, it, it, it was it was a, it was a strange thing for me anyway. One, you had Charles Sachi that was just completely shaking up the market. You know, I remember, I remember seeing this uh, imagery of, of a Pac-Man. There's, there's a documentary on, on Sachi, and it, it, I can't remember exactly what it's called. It's fascinating, but they use this motif of the Pac-Man kind of going along and gobbling up all the artwork. All the <laughs> artwork. I mean, quite literally, you yeah. know. So he used to go into the, uh, the Goldsmith uh, degree shows and again, he probably was taking a punt on, on more than, you know, for every one that was successful, maybe eight or nine weren't, but the, the one paid for all the other nine, you know? Yeah. And and so he was he was he was he was buying up all his work, but that was a self-fulfilling profit. I mean, to be in that position is amazing, really. Mm. Because he'd got this reputation and he'd put on the sensation exhibition and stuff, he was he was he was God. He he was he was, you know, the arbiter of taste. And basically what, what he did is as soon as he bought the work, then that just naturally went up anyway, simply because he bought it, you know? Mm-hmm. What a what a what a what a kind of perverse but great situation to be in. Mm-hmm. So 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 he he the 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 profile of these artists just just went through the roof as soon as he, he bought any work, you know. So the, so they got not just a step up, but they got like 10 steps up yeah. within their career. Now, love it or like uh, loathe it, the the, the bad thing was that the, the installation was, was, was highly original. You know, nobody had ever had an insight into the kind of minutiae of, of a squalid kind of, I don't know, student living, you know, with the, with the condoms and the used tampons and, you know, all, all, the, all the detritus of life. And they've taken that and, and stuck it in a bloody art gallery. I mean, there, there are obviously other examples, but for some reason... It, it, it chimed with people, and it had it had a kind of honesty and originality to it. You know that as as, as a piece of artwork. Yeah? yeah, I mean, you might not like it, but it, it, it people's ears pricked up because of it. And in addition, that Charles Satchi bought it, the two combined, her career went off. You know, and um, and and she's obviously smarter than you, you you maybe give her credit for because she's maintained that over the years. I'm, I'm not saying she ain't smart. I'm not saying she's not smart <laughs> at all. No, there's obviously something. Yeah, there. 
yeah yeah okay fair, I'll just, fair, I'll just, fair I just i haven't yeah. seen anything that you know that's uh i mean you know no the, I, the I'm, bedroom, in, if you've been into to if, be honest, if you've been into I, any I'm student's not. She house leaves me cold. She, she leaves me cold i don't yeah. i don't i don't really kind of i don't know her work enough to make a real critique you know because yeah. i just you see bits and pieces but i've never been really convinced by her work you know but i, I think maybe that's just to a certain extent reflection on taste and, and also just just she doesn't cut it for us, you know. Yeah. And that way, that, that's fine. You know, you yeah, can't yeah, yeah. all. <laughs> no, no, of course uh, not. Of course not. <laughs> um, but normally, even, even something that you don't like, you can see why other people do. Um, yeah. <clears throat> there's yeah. some things. Again, I, I think you know. You, you mentioned there the, the, the fact that Sachi took it on board, and you know, and uh, yeah, it was it was different at the time. All right, Nick. Yeah. Final question. Final question. Um, a bit of a bit of a broad one here. Um, what would you have done differently, or maybe um, I, I should say, what kind of advice? Would you uh, give to the Nick Bentley of twenty years ago? And don't don't, don't mention know, buying a certain artist or buying Bitcoin either. You know, so talking about you know the the, the business of being a gallerista. Yeah, yeah. I, I, well, I was going to say I remember when um, a guy who specialised in Lowry artwork. Yeah. Um. So as well, somebody came into the gallery in the traffic centre and said, "I'm interested in buying some some Lowry." And, uh, and so I knew the connection and he was probably the go-to person that dealt in Lowry. And this is, this is 20 odd years ago. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he came in with all these drawings in a very casual way, you know, quite, quite big, significant, classic Lowry's. And I was like, how much is that? Oh, that's 4,000. How much is that? Oh, that's like 6,000, you know. And I was like, mm, you know, <laughs> over an hour, you know. And then, and then off he went, you know, maybe a couple of oils that were like 8,000 or something like that, you know. And I was I was just kind of, well, I, I do contemporary artwork, you know. I like it, but it's not my thing. I'm, yeah. I'm not interested in it, you know. Yeah. And all I should have done is just bought a couple of dogs. Because <laughs> they would have been, you know, they would have been pension material by now. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so that, 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 was, that was the one that got away, you know. And I did like Larry as well. It's not like I, mm. I just was dismissive because I didn't like the work. I, I actually like the pieces as well, yeah. you know. Um. What 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 would I have I done? What would I have done differently? God, that's 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 a tricky question, isn't it? Um, I'm, and so I'm not allowed to say get into NFTs either. No, NFTs. No, no, no Bitcoin. No, uh, no, 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 no Apple shares. Yeah, yeah. As, as I, mm. I would, I would have probably. Um, broaden my portfolio out maybe slightly more i would have would have had um a, a more diverse more slightly more um you see I, I i always wanted to push the boundaries on the artists that i represented mm. in the art zoo innately i always wanted to kind of you know introduce the slightly edgier more make potentially more you know more difficult to understand that work yeah but what i've always found frustrating is that even though i represented like a really uh, you know upmarket gallery in manchester it was still in, in manchester and predominantly most of the work was people visiting the gallery mm. and so the, the the nature of the collector has always to a certain extent dis, um, dictated what's in the gallery because if people aren't coming in and buying so th- there's a kind of natural level that it starts to form you know and i realized that i wanted to go beyond there and be a little bit more cutting edge and, and so probably i would have been more proactive in the london market right okay um but, you know I just yeah i just thought of another one I, um you mentioned did, did you have a warhol I, I had a Warhol that was uh, that framed, so I was in possession of a very short period of time. <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, the, the, he, he was he was a good client. He bought several pieces. He bought an Ed Chapman actually. Oh right. Um, of uh, of um, um, the 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 he was the, he was the, the supermodel. Um, Al McPherson. Um, no, the the, the Kate Moss. Anyway, yeah, Kate Moss got it. Yeah, yeah. It, it was bloody good as well. You know. Yeah. And um, so he phoned me up the way he used to do very randomly and said, um, you do framing, don't you? I went, yeah, yeah. Um, um, I've, got, I've got this piece, can I just drop it off? I was like, yeah, okay. So he pulled up in his bloody Range Rover right outside the entrance of the gallery in Ancos, Yeah. and then just wandered in with this Andy Warhol original. It, it was actually of Lenin as well, you know? Yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, <laughs> So it's not just an ordinary dog, it's an Andy Warhol, you know? 
And uh, so I said, yeah, okay, you know, we're going to have to have this friend in the best way, you know. Um, so so off he went, really casual, didn't want like a receipt, didn't want any kind of, you know, you know, um, uh, documentation to say I'm, I'm in possession of it, you know. And and what happened was my friend came into the gallery and I said, look, I've got this, you know, can you can you just tell me uh, the best way? So he came down and I'd, I'd like squirreled it away, hidden it basically in the, yeah. in the basement, you know. <laughs> and I got down and he was like, well, if you can ask me to frame that, I'm telling you straight, I can't, my insurance is not going to cover that, you know? And this is why is it worth that much, you know? And at the time, I don't know, he was, he was probably like 100,000 or something, yeah. you know? And then obviously one that, what, that was 20 odd years ago and, and, yeah. and they've gone to the roof. So I, I very, very gingerly had it framed and then brought it back. <laughs> and, and the guy, the guy, I think he, I think he was there for about three months. <laughs> he just left Before it there, he just kind of, Say again? He left it there. He left me and I was like, uh, you need to pick this painting up. I don't want it. It's not insured. You know, <laughs> just 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 take it type of thing. And he was there for bloody months before he picked us up. Yeah. Well, has anyone? So, but, is it... but, but I remember, just, just one last thing. I remember yeah. looking at it and it was the first intimate experience I've had with a wall. You see them in the galleries and things and you see the walls, but they're all, you're almost, almost overexposed to, yeah. you know, the, the 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 usual suspects but because it was in the gallery and i could study it and it was there it was real you know it, it was bloody good I, mm. I, I was i was really impressed by the, the quality of it you know mm. um but yeah so that that was my 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 touching <laughs> but probably the most expensive artwork i've physically touched you know right. okay. apart from a, a sneaky stroke in the louvre or something <laughs> <laughs> nick has, has anyone ever slipped through your fingers has anyone ever sort of come in and you said no and, and then they've gone away and, and made it big? Uh, don't think so. Mm. No. No. Okay. Well, there's a success. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I suppose. That, yeah, it's, it's, it's a plus, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I haven't got like that. Like, yeah. That. No, that's, that's, that's very good. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that's excellent. All right, Nick, um, we'll bring you to a close there. Thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. Um, thank, 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 thanks, thanks for having me. I, I hope I'll give you just a little bit more of a, an insight, you know. Definitely. It's, very, uh, very worthwhile. It's an interesting world and it's going through some interesting, uh, you know, changes at the moment. It'll be, be, it certainly may, is. Maybe we can, we, can, we can have a follow up in, you know, in, in, in a year or so, a couple of years and we'll, we'll, we'll see how, how the, the land lies, you know. Yeah, how it lies post COVID. All right, Nick, take care yeah. of yourself, mate. All right, thanks. Okay. Bye bye now. Thanks a lot, Andy. Cheers. Bye.